Hey friend, John McLennan here, and in this video you're going to learn how to play Nobody's Fault But Mine, as recorded by Otis Redding on guitar. Now this song features the incredible guitar work of Steve Cropper, and it starts off with this really kind of bluesy figure, and then we go into some classic R&B and soul rhythm guitar moves. I'm gonna break it all down for you note for note, but before we jump in, if you're new here, I've got a gift for you. I put together this awesome fretboard guide that's gonna show you the five chords and scales that I use to map out the entire fretboard. And it's really gonna help you understand the chord and scale connection. And I wanna give it to you completely for free. Just go to johnmcclennan.com com slash fretboard guide or you can use the first link down below to grab your copy all right well with that said let's break down this song let's break down how to play nobody's fault but mine as recorded by otis redding now the intro kicks off with this really cool bluesy guitar part and then moves up to some chord hits as the horns come in here's what it sounds like one two three four <laughs> We're starting out with just two low E bass notes. I'm gonna play those as down plucks there with my strum hand. One and. Then on beat two, we're gonna slide into this double stop, which looks like part of an A chord here. I'm playing the sixth fret on the third string, and then the fifth fret on the second string. Now with that, I'm gonna let the open high E ring out as well. It's a really cool sound. We're gonna slide in from one fret below. Then do two more strums there. Once you arrive at the fifth position, so. Then from there, we're gonna move down two frets. And now we're gonna be on four and three. Very common, right, bluesy part there. We're gonna strum that. And then we're gonna play the third fret on the second string and then the fourth fret. So. One and two E and a three E and a four E and a. Now, if that's too hard to hit those last two notes, kind of as uh, arpeggio picking, you can just strum it as well, so. Or picking the notes. Then from there, we slide up to the 12th fret. You can use your index finger. Then we're gonna go to an E chord. One, two, three, four, and play these quarter note hits here. So that E chord is from the fourth string down, 14, 13, 12, 12. Just hit that chord and then rest. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So all together the intro goes. Then Otis comes in with the verse. We're gonna play this. This is the first four bars here. We're playing an E7 to an A7. Very common rhythm and blues chords here. I'm gonna play the open E, and then here's that E7, seven, six, seven. Five. Looks like a C chord just up here, and then I add the pinky to bring in the dominant seventh. So you hit the chord, first low E, 
then strum, then go to single notes here. Those are the notes D to E, or 7th fret to 9th fret. It's just a really groovy part, right? Just playing the chord, and then a little line. Then we do the same thing, but we go to the A chord. So here you could play the 5th fret of the low E, and sometimes I'll use my index finger and go like this, or you could use your thumb. Now this A7 is from the 4th string down, 5, 6, 5, 5. Then you go, that's the 5th fret of the 4th string, the note G up to the note A, a whole step higher. So we're basically moving from the 1 chord to the 4 chord, or E7 to A7. Here's what that sounds like. slide back into that 12th fret and play. Okay, this is an E chord up here, just like our intro. We could do it like this. We could do it like this. We're gonna slide into 12, one and two, and then we'll go. That's the 12th fret of the fifth string. Then 15 on low E to 12. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Slight variation. So that starts the same way, slide in, then 12, 12, 12, 15, 15, slide to 12, then the first one again. Then we go. And that's over nobody's fault but mine, the hook there. So that's just an A chord, down to a G, and down to an E. I love that part, so. Then we're back to we're back to the intro, the horns and everything. So all together, the verse progression from when Otis comes in singing sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Then we go back, everything goes again. Now after that, we go on to the bridge. Now here we bring in a B chord, the five chord, but we're gonna play this very common blues rhythm pattern. Here's what it sounds like. So what I played here was a B power chord. This is the seventh fret of the low E to the ninth fret there on the fifth string. I'm gonna make this classic blues pattern here where you just add your pinky there to, that's gonna be the eleventh fret on the fifth string. But I'm gonna walk it up even higher like this. One and two and three and four and. Very common rock and roll rhythm and blues guitar here. Using a little bit of palm muting, play that twice. Then go A to G like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Then reset. Back to B. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and then up to E. Just quarter notes. One, two, three, four.
So you can really see how inventive this song is and how cool it is to basically kick the song off with a classic riff and then sort of pull back into the rhythm section and play more pocket style guitar parts and then see how it all comes together to create the hit song that we love. So be sure to rewind the video and go over any parts that are unclear. And then I can't stress this enough, you want to go and play along with the recording. These recordings have such great feels and grooves to them and we want to play along with the rhythm section and the track and just sort of soak that up like a sponge so that it gets into our playing and we start playing with that feel and that groove. And to help you even more, be sure to pick up my ultimate fretboard guide at the first link down below. And this is gonna show you the five chords and scales that I use to map out the entire fretboard. And when you're playing a guitar part, like what we did where we went to the E7 and then we do this little single note part, a lot of that comes from the scales that go with the chords. So getting this PDF is gonna help you understand the chord and scale connection. And that's so important for really learning the neck. I wanna give it to you completely for free. Just go to johnmcclennan.com slash fretboard guide, or you can use the first link down below. And next, I wanna hear from you. Leave a comment down below and let me know your number one struggle with guitar right now. Just comment it down below so I can make some future videos here on the channel helping you out. As always, thanks for your support, and we'll see you in another lesson real soon.